Hello, and welcome to the fourth session of the intervention Ta vie in Motion. During this session, we will explore together how people around you and the services available in your community can help you to meet the everyday challenges with Parkinson's disease and to solve concrete problems. For example, I will help you to draw a complete picture of your support network, distinguish the different type of needs and resources to meet those needs, define your need for primary support, develop a request for support in order to respond to this need that you have targeted with the help of the problem-solving approach. To begin this session, I would like to assign you your first exercise. This first exercise consists of creating a picture of the people around you who can provide you with a support network. These are the people you can or could count on if you need help or a favor. Here is the example of the Wilsons. Mr. Wilson has been living with Parkinson's for seven years and his wife, Mrs. Wilson, has osteoarthritis of the hip, and she will be undergoing a surgery in a few months. The couple wants to get organized for the surgery, especially for hospital visits, shopping, meals, indoor and outdoor home maintenance. Together, we have completed a tool called EcoMap, the EcoMap has been used to identify the support network of Mrs. and Mr. Wilson. I have asked them to identify especially the people around them and their resources that could help them. Here are some of the highlights of our discussions. Mrs. and Mr. Wilson, I'd like you to reflect about potential people around you that could be part of your support network. Who do you think could bring you support in your situation? Well, there are my two brothers and my niece. Are there other people around you? Think about the services and organizations around you that you are already using or could be helpful. There is also the pharmacist and the grocer. They are really nice people. You forgot the people from the corner restaurant where we order sometimes and who will have a home delivery service. If you had a special need for help, who could you ask for help? Maybe ask the home care assistance from the community local services center and other services? Indeed, the community local services center is an important gateway to the health system. You could also ask the volunteer action center for transportation, a housekeeping co-op, Find business contractors or a local teenager for snow removal and lawn mowing, or a support group from the Parkinson Quebec organization. With the help of their niece, Mrs. and Mr. Wilson prepared meals ahead of time and also bought frozen food. They contacted their next door neighbor's son, hiring him for outdoor home maintenance. They got in touch with the community local services center to find out about the resources in their neighborhood. Having established their support network has helped them to foster their sense of security because they know where to turn in case they need the support. As I did with the Wilsons, I invite you to draw a complete picture of those around you who can provide you with a strong support network. The usefulness of this approach is to have a global picture of the people around you who could be mobilized prior to making your request for help, so they're being informed about your specific needs for support. The EcoMap is a flow diagram that maps family and community systems process over time and is particularly useful if one of you one day is to be admitted to the hospital, but useful also in other everyday circumstances 
where you may need help and support. In addition, by identifying your support network, the EcoMap also allows you to explore who you might contact for a particular need or a situation of assistance. For example, think of places like day and rehabilitation centers, Meals on Wheels, adapted transport services, or funded services like Appui for care partners support. Finally, to be able to reach out loved ones living far away by meeting through conference calls, by phone, or by internet. To help you in this process, consult and print the fact sheet about our EcoMap. Since the arrival of Parkinson's in your lives, you have surely experienced at one time or another, the need to receive support and help to preserve your health and your quality of life. Support for different types of needs is completely normal and encountered by all couples throughout the course of the disease. Having support of others is a central and protective element that helps overcome daily challenges and resolve some difficult situation. In fact, there are four types of needs for support. The need for information, the need for physical and emotional support, the need for social activities, and the need for material support. I invite you to listen to both couples the Roy's and the Gentis, speaking to you about their needs for ongoing support and care services. My wife was diagnosed with Parkinson's two years ago. It hit us like a log. At the same time, we were relieved to finally know what I had. The first months, we wanted to know everything about the disease to get a balance on it. We went on the internet and read everything about the disease. It discouraged us so much. I think I even had almost a breakdown. We don't know what is good or not good to read, where to get the appropriate information to know where we stand. It's also important for us to keep hope. Yes, we want to know what we're up against, but we especially want to have things to keep our spirits alive and our lifestyle together. Fall is coming. I don't know what's happening to us, but it looks like we are not ready to face another grim winter. It's true. Last year, we found the winter season to be quite long. Our two adult children live far away from us because of their jobs. Then, on the weekends, they're busy with their grandchildren's activities. They come to visit us as often as possible. But it's still difficult. As for us, when the roads are snowy, we don't dare to go out with a car. Before Parkinson's, we used to socialize, to go out together, to go to the movies, or to see shows. Also... He had his own activities, and I had mine. We really want to keep seeing people. Yes, to feel less alone, confined within four walls. To be able to meet the challenges associated with Parkinson's, many couples wish to have the result information on research data related to the disease to know the different ways used by other couples or methods of interventions suggested by experienced healthcare workers, as well as to know about the helpful resources which are available to assist them. Knowing where to go and how to find valid information would allow them to get answers to their questions and immediate concerns to lead an active life, and to be hopeful. The need for information consists of sharing information and useful tips coming from reliable resources and that can take different forms, such as advice, suggestions, or proposals. 
To meet the need for information, you can use several resources such as medical professionals, legal professionals, and community and government organizations. Also, we must not forget other couples who live with Parkinson's and who still have an enriching, meaningful life experience. Finally, you can read books, brochures, watch webinars, and use the services of trustworthy, reputable, and accurate websites that are recognized to some extent as a wealth of information. Research is very, very important to us. All research is important. We think it's good for our morale. It gives us the strength to fight. As long as there is hope, we can stay focused on the positive. Another helpful thing is being able to count on examples from other couples who are having the same problems as us. There are some who really have courage and good ideas. They seem to function and go on with their lives anyway despite the disease. We need to develop ways to live our lives and put Mr. Parkinson in its place. But there are practical tips and things we don't know about the disease. It's a real mess. To find out where or whom to turn to, when and how to do it, to go about asking for help and services, well, there's work to do there. When you need reassurance and comfort, when you look for someone to confide in, or when you need to be understood, to be supported, to have someone you trust by your side, it means that you need emotional support. With Parkinson's or other illnesses, you may also need to receive physical help for a task that has become difficult to perform or to receive health care and treatment tailored to your unique situation. There are several people who can assist you with your needs or of emotional or physical support. Think of the different people around you and of health professionals and home support services. For an instance, a family member, a friend, a neighbor, a volunteer, a psychologist. You can also think of activities that make you feel good, that are enjoyable and relaxing for you. On an emotional level, a friendly pet can also be a source of happiness and help you feel less lonesome. Finally, for some, being part of a support group related to the Parkinson disease and having a spiritual life can be precious allies to meet an emotional need. Despite the presence of Parkinson's, you may wish to have more recreational activities, hobbies, and how things that you enjoy or to keep up with activities already present in your lives. The interest of taking part in these social activities is also to share moments with people who have interests similar to yours. You can participate in social activities with your loved ones, namely with your spouse, your children, your grandchildren, your family, a neighbor, your good friends. To take part in these activities or events, you can join several different places like social clubs, libraries, cultural, fitness, sports, community, or day centers. You can also join exercises or walking groups, individual trips, or organized groups. The cafes, coffee shops, and restaurants may also be friendly places to meet and to chat over a snack, a drink, or a meal. As Parkinson's is a progressive disease, it is quite possible that over the years you may need material support, which requires direct assistance. For example, for a loan or to buy equipment of transfers. Also for assistant services, 
such as preparing meals or providing physical care. It can imply daily life activities, from chores inside or outside the home, or other financial credit services or access to grants. If you need material support, you can apply to the Community Local Services Center in your neighborhood. Rehabilitation centers or local volunteer centers, community and government organizations, private agencies, pharmacies, and adaptive equipment stores may also offer services that may meet your needs for material supports. To sum it all, there are a variety of resources that offer help and support to couples like you living with Parkinson's disease. The resources available vary according to regions, city, and even neighborhood. However, some health and social services networks serve the entire territory of Quebec. In regards to your immediate and future necessary support, I invite you to take the steps to name your needs for support and to consult the section Resources for a short description of the principal resources that may be useful to you. Discover the many ways to help you and use them to meet your needs to facilitate your journey as a couple living with Parkinson's. To help you in this process, consult and print the fact sheet about resources to meet the different types of needs. With your experience and expertise with Parkinson's, what do you think is your greatest need for support as a couple today in your life? Is it a need for information? Is it a need for physical and emotional support? Is it a need for social activities? Is it a need for material support? You probably have several needs in mind and you may not know where to start. I therefore invite you to reflect and identify your most important need presently for your couple. By identifying a need for support, it often helps to resolve a number of difficulties. Don't we say that by naming the need, already one understands the problem half of the way through the solution. That's why you are called to target your most important current need, that is to save your energy and to avoid discouragement. As the saying goes, one day at a time, one need at a time. Therefore, I invite you to check the next segment of Tevi in Motion to help you formulate a request for support linked closely to your primary need. We have seen so far that there are different types of needs for support. We have seen that many resources can be used and mobilized to address these types of support. Now, it is important to know how to formulate a request for support. To achieve this, we will use the same problem-solving approach that was seen in the previous session, and we will apply it to a request for support. Here are the key questions to help you target the major elements in line with your request for support. What? In other words, what is your need? What strategy have you been trying in the past? So far, how have you tried to meet this need? What obstacles have you encountered? How did you bypass them? What benefits? What changes would you observe 
if your request for support was successful. What do you think you could learn from this experience? What are the resources you could count on? Think also of people in your support network. How could you go about to apply your request for support? When could you start to apply this strategy? Let's see how the Smiths and the Martins have used the problem-solving approach to meet a need for support. What is your most important need for support right now? We need help with our appointments and outings as we no longer use the car in winter. So far, what strategy have you used to meet your transportation needs? I've contacted my brother Marcel and our daughter Nadia to drive us to our appointments, if possible. What obstacles have you encountered? We're sometimes embarrassed to call on people around you. We don't want to bother them. His brother is retired and often gone on a trip. Our daughter has two children and she works. She's already pretty busy. What benefits could you see if you had help with your appointments and other outings? By having an additional resource for transportation, travel will be easier. We may be less stressed and less afraid of bothering other people. What resources can you turn to? We have a neighbor who has offered to help us, but... We could never dare ask them. We could also get a taxi. My girlfriends also advise me to make an appointment with the Community Local Services Center Home Support Service, with the local volunteer center in our neighborhood, or with the Adapted Transport Service. These could be useful resources. For some organizations, you may need to complete a form. For example, for the Adapted Transport Service, you will need to print and complete part one of the application form, adding your name, address, driving license if you have one, specifying the reasons for the request and the difficulties encountered in terms of mobility and walking. Part two must be completed by a health professional that is familiar with the diagnosis of Parkinson's and your health condition. Once the form is completed, attach it to a recent photo and proof of age, such as a photocopy of birth certificate or health insurance card. Finally, you must mail out the completed form to the adapted transportation service in your region, the address being written on the form. How could you go about getting help when you are going out? We will need the phone number of the Adapted Transport customer service in our region, and we're going to have to go over our embarrassment to seek help from Adapted Transportation. You will also need to communicate in advance the date and time of your trip or medical or other appointments so that the care partner or person around you the volunteer or the transportation service, is available. When do you think you could start to apply this approach for support? We could apply a request for help before the next medical appointment. Or just a few months before the start of winter season. It would be one less burden and stress on us. What do you need most these days? I find it harder and harder to get around the house at times. It's true. It's not easy for you to take a shower, and especially at night to go to the bathroom. We could apply the problem-solving approach. What would be the most helpful ways to help you feel safe when you come and go at home? Presently, when I move around, I lean on the furniture or the walls. What obstacles make you move around with more difficulty? I have to be careful not to fall. It's true that there is a risk of falling. Do you think there are resources or equipment we can get that could help you? Yes, I believe so. I saw an advertisement on grab bars. They install these in the hallways and the bathroom. I saw transfer benches for the bath and shower at the pharmacy. 
What other obstacles could we encounter? Maybe these things are expensive. And with my tremors, I may also have trouble installing them. It would be worth asking for help to do this. What would be the benefits? For me, for sure that installing suitable adapted equipment in the house would allow me to prevent falls and fractures. And you, I presume, you would sleep better knowing that I'm safe. Even if it's not cheap. Indeed, it could cost less than if you had to go to the hospital because you had a bad fall. Besides, it will help us keep our quality of life at home. When would we do that? We could get in touch with my brother. I know he's installed some at his home. We could ask him how he did it. Good idea. As you can see, using the problem-solving approach allowed the Smiths and the Martins to make a request to support their immediate needs and to receive a successful response. In addition to the problem-solving approach, there are several practical tips to improve your chances of succeeding in your requests for support. For instance, do not hesitate to leave messages on the healthcare worker's answering machine when inquiring information about the various systems of resources by specifying your name, telephone number, and your types of needs for support. Also, when you call an organization and your call goes on voicemail to redirect you to a range of options, immediately press the zero key on your telephone to access an operator. Don't be embarrassed to ask for help when you need it. It's best to find out about the services before being in a crisis or in an emergency. By being organized, far-sighted planners, you're making sure as a couple to remain in control of your decisions. To help you in this process, consult and print the fact sheets the problem-solving approach, and practical tips to improve your chances to successfully requesting support. If for you, sometimes navigating the maze of the Quebec healthcare system can be daunting in terms of bureaucracy, let me assure you it is normal to feel lost and not to know where to start. Asking for support can be difficult, but there are many resources available to you or that could help you navigate through the healthcare system. For instance, do not hesitate to call your family doctor or your family medicine clinic, your community local services center, or the Parkinson Quebec organization. There are many resources available and ready to help and support you. You both have the strengths and resources within you and around you. As a couple, during this session, you were able to reflect on your ability to identify your need for support and how to plan a request together to get support. I strongly encourage you to start using the resources you have targeted to meet your need for support. In the future, you can repeat this process as often as necessary to address Parkinson's disease or any other chronic disease. You are equipped with tools to effectively meet many challenges. During the next session, we will discuss effective communication, which is the most essential ingredient to expect harmonious relationship. I wish you good luck, and I will see you soon for the next session.